I don't even know uh, where to start with this one, but I couldn't let complete misinformation like this just go unchallenged. As you know, I'm on the road doing my Canada-wide trucked up stop tour, but here in Quebec, in my hotel, uh, up pops this video on my channel feed, and I, I just had to respond. Hello, trucked up guys and gals. As you know, Ford has been on a real tear with the F-150 Lightning lately. The sales are up substantially. CEO Jim Farley is aggressively promoting these vehicles by offering incentives to the dealerships. And as well, they're adding these added value benefits to customers, such as free EV chargers and install employee pricing, there's been a lot of incentives that have really helped move the needle and create more of a widespread adoption of EV trucks. And it seems to be working. We're seeing them in the numbers. However, not according to Sam Evans out of Australia with Electric Viking, who put out some significant FUD. I think the best thing to do here is just start by playing the video and I'll jump in to show just how bad this is and how damaging this can be by putting out this kind of misinformation, especially when you're kind of pushing yourself as the EV reporting channel. Reporting means back checking your information. Reporting means what you're putting out there isn't just whatever happens to pop up in your inbox and you just spew it out. That's how misinformation gets spread. Let's dive in and you'll see what I mean. What on earth is going on here? Ford has so many Ford F-150 Lightnings sitting gathering dust that um, they're paying dealerships huge amounts of money to actually just pick the cars up, not even to sell them. To sell them, they'll pay them even more money on top of that. Okay, first off, no Ford F-150 Lightnings are collecting dust. They're actually moving these vehicles quite quickly. As we can see in the physical numbers of sales right across the United States, and also here in Canada, what he seems to be going on off the start is information that's been completely turned on its head. As far as paying dealerships to get rid of these because they can't sell them, complete bunk. We'll get into what kind of numbers uh, Sam Evans with the Electric Vikings pumping out here and what's actually correct. Also, make sure you have a source before you say something. Let me demonstrate. Looking at the third quarter EV sales in the United States, you can see EV sales grew. It's pretty significantly, in fact, by 11% year over year. 11% EV sales in the United States are up. Tesla Model Y first, Tesla Model 3 second, Tesla Cybertruck third. There is no Ford F-150 Lightnings in the top 10. The top 10. What the hell? I mean, look at these numbers here. They are shocking. First off, let's take the one right at the top because he's really pro Tesla. So uh, he's saying Tesla Model Y, you know, Look at the numbers, top number one. But what he doesn't point out is the number to the right year over year. Sales in the Tesla Model Y are down 9% over the previous year. Tesla Model 3s are up 9% after they've been incentivized. Massive incentives and price changes with the Model 3 and Model Ys to move vehicles. We've been seeing Tesla do this for ages, but when another does something similar, suddenly it's they can't move the vehicles. They're, they're collecting dust on the lot. We'll get to that, but as you can see already, this information is being twisted here. But let's go down to line item number three, the Tesla Cybertruck, 16,692. Look, it's number three, wow. There were two million estimated pre-orders on this vehicle. Third quarter sales, 16,692, but overall sales, Tesla Cybertruck so far, year to date, is around 28,000, according to Forbes, 28,150. If you go to Wikipedia, that's from different sources, they refer to as financial experts, on those they come to 27,000 and change for total year-to-date sales for the Tesla Cybertruck. This was on a vehicle that in the after ramp up was expected to be selling 250,000 vehicles a year. And we've got for one quarter, 16,692. And for the previous two quarters, about 10,000. So that's terribly unimpressive. In fact, so unimpressive because the pre-orders, they said, you're not, we're not gonna be able to even ship them to Canada until 2025. That was from Tesla directly. Two months later, people in Canada are being called and told that they can get the Cyber Beast Foundation Series right away. And then within a month of that, because they've obviously exhausted their entire waiting list, quote unquote, 
they start offering the regular models right across the board. If I wanted to right now, I could pick up the phone and order a Cybertruck and get one in three months. What does that tell you? Who knows? Maybe it'll continue to do well. But the reality is it's not doing anywhere near as well as it should be doing. And just to clarify something else, he gives this number, which is completely inaccurate. So Ford didn't even sell. They didn't even, they sold less than 3,000 F-150 Lightnings across all of America in the third quarter of this year. These sales, to be honest, are absolutely shocking. This statement is complete garbage. Kelly Blue Book's own official report, number one at 166,000 vehicles is Tesla. Number two in the entire country in the US is Ford at number two with 23,500, a lot less, but closing the gap rapidly. But let's scroll down to the, the actual vehicles themselves. And right here, Q3, uh, just go and ask Mr. Google. This is 30 seconds of investigative journalism. All Sam Evans had to do is ask Google for the Q3 numbers. And there it is, Ford F-150 Lightning sales, 7,162, not 3,000 not under 3,000. In fact, even last year, if there was a mistake made, which I think is what happened is the source that was so reliable that he's quoting used the wrong year's number, or he looked at a report that was over a year old because that was around 3,000, but it was not below 3,000, it was above. So I'm still not sure where the heck he got that number from. The reality is Ford F-150 Lightning's 7,162 compared to the same quarter last year at 3,000 and change, sales are up well over 100%. In fact, I believe it's 111% increase. But let's go even further. The Chevrolet Silverado EV that is now in full ramp and is getting out there. How did it do in Q3? Because it's the new kid on the block. Everyone's excited about it. I actually love the truck. I'd probably be driving it if I could have got my hands on. That has sold in the same quarter, 1,995. So Ford has almost quadrupled the sales. It's done three and a half times the number of sales in Lightnings as the brand new kid on the block, the shiny new uh, toy, has done in the same quarter. This is an important one. So you remember we were going back to the Cybertruck and say, oh, you know, it's doing so, you know, it's it's the truck. Year to date, Ford has sold 22,807 Lightnings, an increase of 86% year over year. But here's the real clincher. Year to date, 28,000 and change of Cybertruck. Ford, which has been on the market now two and a half years, is still selling 22,000 to 28,000. So brand new spanking, 2 million pre-orders, Elon Musk super triangle mobile. It may be a great truck. There's amazing things about the Cybertruck, but let's just look at the numbers. Ford is still getting very close to matching what the Cybertruck is selling. Again, complete FUD coming out of the electric Viking. Let's get back to the video. I would not have believed this story and I wouldn't have made a video about it if I hadn't have found this from a very, very credible source. Automotive News is reporting that Ford dealers are being paid $22,500 to simply sell an F-150 Lightning. Here he says, oh, I wasn't going to report on this. This isn't reporting because there's been no back checking of any of the information that's in this video. His source that he says he's quoted is Automotive News. But let's go to Automotive News and take a look at what they put out. But also, he doesn't show the source in his description. He doesn't give a timestamp or a clip to the to where he's getting his information from. There's nothing to be found in the description currently, and maybe after this video, he'll stick something in there. It turns out that automotive news has a paywall. You have to be an accessing paying member to get into these stories. So all I can report on is the headline, but I get enough of it to know that Sam Evans and his reading of this automotive news story is complete clickbait because he hasn't, he's either just read the headline like I'm reading it, and didn't get into the meat and details of it because he's misinterpreted some really important numbers. Let's take a look. On the Automotive News website, it says, Ford paying dealers to take F-150 Lightnings from new EV distribution centers. It's not saying that it's paying the dealers to sell these things 
Below that in the subheader, it says dealers can make 22500 by ordering F-150 Lightnings from regional centers designed to reduce carrying costs and give customers quicker access. This is set up so customers can get their EVs faster without having to wait. And that $22,500 is not per vehicle. That's the total amount a dealership can earn depending on how many of these things it moves. So let's go to a more thorough article. This stuff's already appeared in Reddit, so I'm hoping that's where he didn't get a source, but it's basically saying Ford paying dealers to sell more Lightnings from October 15th to November 15th, that one month window. Ford's new incentive gives dealers $1,500 for every 2024 F-150 Lightning that comes from the replenishment center. We'll get to that in a moment. If a dealer unloads more than nine to a maximum of 15, they're not allowed to sell from this replenishment center more than 15, so there's a limit. If they sell more than nine, that the incentive increases to $1,500 from $1,000. So at first, it's not $1,500. It's just $1,000 that the dealer gets as a selling incentive to use these replen replenishment centers to get these vehicles rather than keeping their own inventory or ordering from build and price through the dealership, which then takes longer. This is to expedite the process for the customer because of demand, not the lack of demand. So if they sold the maximum number, they would get a total of $22,500. You see what's happened here? It's just taking information and screwing with it to paint a narrative of failing sales when the exact opposite happens. This is absolutely disgusting in my opinion. I just ticks me off to no end that people are putting this stuff out and then calling themselves an EV information source. It's an embarrassment. Let's actually get into what this is all about, this program that we're talking about. I'm gonna just read right from Electric. I'll, I'll post it as we go along. You can read along with me. Ford dealers just got a significant incentive to test its new pilot program for every F-150 Lightning, oh, Lightning, a little bit of a typo, ordered from one of the Ford's new retail replenishment centers, dealers can earn up to $1,500 per vehicle. Over the next month, Ford dealers can score up to $22,500 through this new program. During Capital Markets Day last May, Ford CEO Jim Farley outlined plans to make buying an electric vehicle as easy as possible. The changes including transparent pricing, a better customer experience, and remote delivery options to get vehicles into customers' hands quicker, Ford said it would introduce new retail replenishment centers called RRCs that can deliver EVs to dealers in an average of seven days. That's what this is about. According to the new memo via Cars Direct, which by the way, I clicked on, you can do the same if you visit Electric here. I'll actually provide all these links below, unlike others. Ford will pay dealers up to $1,500 for each F-150 Lightning model ordered from the RRC. The pilot program runs just for a month. Ford said it encourages dealers to test and experience the new EV distribution centers through the program. They're wanting this to become the norm. Okay, With RRC spread across the U.S., Ford dealers can now stock fewer vehicles while giving buyers access to more options. This is basically changing how distribution is happening. It's a brilliant approach by Ford. It's the exact opposite of what's being said in this video. Let's continue. I can't believe... Ford dealerships, or well, Ford themselves, need to pay Ford dealerships this amount of money to sell F-150 Lightnings. I, I just don't understand it. What is going on here? Well, here's the story from Automotive News. Dealers can make $22,500 by ordering 15 F-150 Lightnings from regional centers designed to reduce carrying costs and give customers quicker access. Now, apparently, Ford is offering dealers enormous subsidies um, to sell, to pick these cars up. So here again, a complete twist of what's happening. If he would have done just an ounce of research, he would have realized Ford is not paying its dealerships trying to force them to sell these things. It's trying to get them to use a different method of distribution. So they're incentivizing them to utilize it rather than buying their own inventory and holding, or rather than building through the dealership to get it sent to the customer. Because in that way, the dealership probably makes more money. So by doing it this way, 
the dealership would think, I'm going to make less money than if I ordered it, kept in my own inventory, and I set my own prices. Or if I order through the building price, I get a bigger spread. So Ford's saying, okay, we appreciate that dealerships. So what we're going to do is we're going to incentivize you so it's equivalent or at least close and satisfies the needs of your customers rather than going through the traditional end. Let's keep going. And they're apparently offering them, I've heard numbers of 7,500 per vehicle, 7,500 per vehicle to Ford dealerships to sell these you know, F-150 Lightnings. I heard from my mother's cousin's uh, friend who lives in the basement and hangs out on Facebook pages, or I heard from Reddit, or I heard from, where are your facts? That's not factual. And saying, oh, I heard that they're giving them away. They're giving huge subsidies. He's he's interpreted this $22,500 as per truck. And then he's saying $7,500 on top of this. A little further on, he even goes further. But honestly, I don't understand the sales figures. Like, How, are, how is Tesla annihilating the Ford F-150 Lightning? How is the Tesla annihilating the Ford F-150 Lightning, doing nothing of the sort, as I mentioned earlier. At the very beginning of this video, he says that the dealerships are, quote, giving away F-150 Lightnings. Just tell him, just get them off the lot. Just take them. He has no credible sources for any of the information he's providing. The rest of the video, he goes on and on, waxing on about how great the Cybertruck is for charging speeds. Uh, and the F-150 Lightning at 150 kilowatt. Well, for the first eight, 10 minutes, if you're at a fast charger, the super fast charger, as any F-150 Lightning person knows, you're charging around 175 to 180 kilowatts for that first eight to 10 minutes. So it boosts and then starts to slow, goes to around the 150 mark, then drops around to 125. However, what he negates to mention is that Teslas themselves, Ys, 3s, Cybertruck, all of them, they do great, again, as a curve. And the curve lasts longer. Agreed. All of those things are correct, but it then falls off. As I've been on the road in every single province and talking with Tesla owners at the Tesla superchargers because I'm using the adapter, they're saying the same thing is that they don't stay at 250 continuously. It, it ramps down pretty fast and then they're in the 150 mark whereas my truck's around 125. So is there a spread? Absolutely there's a spread in charging speeds. But for a country like Canada and many parts of the United States, super fast chargers of 250 or 350 are not that common. Even Tesla's own network, there's a whole bunch of Tesla only superchargers that are not available to people who have NAX adapters. And all of those are at 150. I don't think he quite understands the infrastructural challenges or what actually is the infrastructure here in North America. I give some credit here to his statement that the Tesla Cybertruck is better in charging speeds. So is the Silverado EV, one of the reasons why it's so attractive. But as I'm finding out on the road, it's not anywhere near the problem that people are making it out to be. It's so easy for any one of us, myself included. I, I could put out any video and say anything good, bad, or ugly about anything. And if people trusted me with that community that I built up, I could bend things to deliver a message in my favor. Uh, people will say, well, you're ridiculous for wanting to own an EV truck. I own a diesel. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. And the first thing I'll say to them is, you're right. For a lot of people who are using trucks in specific applications, EV trucks aren't there yet. They're getting there. But to be able to speak honestly and candidly, heck, I did a video right here on the top 10 reasons why diesel guys think EV trucks suck. If I was out to try to force people to buy EV trucks, I wouldn't be producing videos like that. The, the responsibility that we have before we put out content, that the information that we're getting is as accurate as we can find, there's not, you know, things get updated, things get changed. We find out that a story that was produced, even though we've got the data from behind it, that data was false or faulty or from a, a questionable source. We've got to do some digging before we put the information out there. And Electric Viking isn't doing it. He's just putting out content. And if it's just content and volume of content to get viewers, that becomes clickbait. Thank you for sticking around and watching this video. It's kind of out of my my wheelhouse. It's things that I don't typically do, but I think it's time to start doing more of it. It's calling out misinformation, calling out poor reporting, and, and making sure that people who want to learn about EV trucks are getting 
good, accurate information to make an important decision if they're wanting to buy one. I want to thank you so much, as always, for watching. Please click the like and subscribe and bell notification icon if you think this is important content. I'm back on the road again. If there's any way that you can help me do more on the road, it's been an incredibly expensive and challenging trip. Any support is greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you soon.